Okay, today's project is back to the uh, tractor, the John Deere 317, 1980 something, 84 maybe. Uh, since I've gotten it, uh, I've got done quite a bit of work to it. This has been, you know, when I got it, it was supposedly rebuilt. I'm not sure how much of it was rebuilt, perhaps the engine was, but you know, there's so many things that can go wrong and right on it, and some things have uh, definitely seen the test of time. It had the original ignition switch, which I replaced. It had the, that's that uh, down there. I actually bought a cheap uh, Chinese version first and that was terrible, didn't work hardly at all. Yeah, the, the things were loose on it, the tabs in the back where you attach the wires were actually loose right from the factory. So I went to uh, John Deere and got a replacement for that. And of course then it worked properly. And I also changed the PTO switch. That was a bear. They're both a bear because the wiring on these things is like tight and jammed in there and stuff. Uh, so I changed this PTO switch. That made a big difference as well. But of course then, I think you guys remember from another video, uh, I ran into problems thinking it was the starter. I started to, uh, trying to start very slowly or it wouldn't start because it was cranking so slowly. So I changed the uh, PTO. And that made a huge difference. So now it's running strong with the PTO. But uh, now it just needs some basic maintenance stuff. Plus I need to make something for it to hold weight on the back. This one isn't uh, really set up to, for weights on the back and I've been looking and I can't find anything online that would hold weights on the back. You can, fill, you can fluid fill these tires, but I don't really want to do that because they, you know, in the summertime then you don't want the fluid in there because it's hard on the grass. Uh, so that would just be in and out, in and out. So I do want to make some kind of rack on the back here. And I started last year um, by making a, uh, a hitch. So here's the start of a hitch I made. Well, no, I made a hitch, not the start of a hitch. So I did make this hitch and it uh, attaches with a couple of um, turnbuckles to the top here that holds it from coming down. That holds the top strongly and then this hooks on to these uh, tabs on the back that are implement tabs you know I could hang some people say I'll oh, just hang the implement on the back but the tiller we have it, w it hangs really low uh, it would just be dragging in the snow uh, if I were to put that on for weight in the back so I'm gonna make something that comes out off this hitch maybe that's something that I can replace and put into this receiver I'm thinking and then just with a pad on it uh, and then I can put a box of weight on there, a box of rocks or, a, I don't know, a bucket of cement or something. So I want to weld this plate onto another piece that would go in here. So here's a big place, plate of steel I have. See if we can weld that on and then I can put things on here. And uh, we'll make tabs on the sides, make sides or whatever needed. So let's get to it. All right, so first things first, got a major leak happening here. Uh, and uh, I think it's just loose bolts on the rear end. Not sure if you can see in there. Loose bolts on the rear end in there after if you need a rebuild or not there. Look at all the grease and gunk back there. But let's just try to uh, cinch everything up that's, that's in there. And also down under here. Let's see if I can get a shot of that. Pretty tight in there, but of course that's the rear end underneath there. Let's see if we can't get at some of those bolts, cinch them up. Maybe a grease, greasy mess. Oh yeah, look at that. Some of these were loose. I don't know if they, came, they came loose or. They just never were tightened right up. Hopefully that's the case. We'll just cinch everything up that we can. It'll be tough to get at these ones. One more. See the drip down there? Look at the drips down there. Maybe you can't see those. Oh, 
there's some drips right down there. Look at those drips are coming down. Let's see if they keep dripping. Or if we catch it now. <clears throat> Alright. Let's just get these ones again. That's tight. Tight. All right, I think there's one at the top from the back. I have to get that one. Those all seem nice and tight. Yep. All right. We'll just give it a bit of a wipe down here and then we can see it's still leaking or where it's leaking from. here so that I could strap it over top or something that could actually bolt right down. Box of rocks, bags of cement. What do you think? Grease pencil, I have to use a regular pencil. Not that easy to see with. Right the bottom. Right, here we go, and I want to watch this uh, shoot it out this way. So we stay away from the tires, of course. So that's probably as far as we can go without compromising the strength this way. So we'll go like that, and we need a hole with that. Let's drill that piece.
get to the drill press. All right, sorry about the light over here. Right, right now I have my stuff all jammed in a corner, but at least it's working. Okay, so people always ask what kind of welder I use, and for 15 years I've used this Lincoln Electric. Still looks like new, actually. I used to have a cover on it, that's why it still looks good. Uh, I use a mixed uh, Argon CO2 gas. Uh, those have gotten expensive. You have to rent the bottles now. You used to be able to own them. Can't do that anymore. Anyways, uh, so yeah, it's a Lincoln Electric. Uh, has some uh, nice settings. It's a 180, so you can weld some pretty thick metal with it. Has an 035 wire in it right now. For this job, I should go a little thicker, but uh, we'll do a couple of passes. And uh, yeah, I did a lot of body work on, you know, sheet metal and stuff, so that's why I have the 035 in there still. And that's the one I started with. Look at that, there's the old uh, core, flux core welder. That's terrible. Maybe good for windy conditions outside or something, but uh, certainly not for body work. And uh, then I upgraded to this, and I haven't up to, had to upgrade to anything else yet. It uh, does the job I want it to do, and it's nice and uh, portable. Anyhow, let's get her plugged in here. Of course, it's uh, 220. Uh, I know there's welders that uh, can go 120, but, you know, and they do an okay job, but this one, you know, can penetrate so much more. So you can do so thicker metal and work on more jobs that way. So get that plugged in like so. And pull out our leads, hook one to our job. Ground that out. And then we'll set up our metal here and uh, get sorted.
start the nose motions, but these here, I'm just going to hold the uh, box that I have, which is uh, an old cooler, a metal cooler, and uh, it'll fit right inside there. All right, so just before we get started here, safety first, let's uh, cover this up with a welding blanket. I thought what I'd do is uh, weld this to the box upside down, or weld them with the box upside down so I can get a nice tight fit. But I need to make sure that box isn't too close to the back of the tractor. So, this is the thing that uh, sticks out the most, the hydraulic for the, uh, this is the hydraulic for the tiller. So if I go out from there, from these holes, these mounting holes, three inches to that piece there so if we go from the other mounting hole three inches this item is
still warm. Still nice and warm. Ooh, there's something up on there. What do you think? What do you think? Seems to work perfectly. In the winter time, got some chains, railway ties, or railway spikes for some reason. A uh, big chunk of metal. Could throw a bunch more stuff in there. Could fill it with rocks, really. Summertime, perfect for uh, your beer. Fill it full of beer and go cutting grass or down to the lake. So we're pretty happy about that. Should work out well. Let's get the welding blanket off it here. The old JD317, getting upgrades. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you on the next one. Lots going on at Danbury Acres. Oh, be inspector, can you fit through there? Sure you can. Look what we did here. We put that box on the back of the old tractor. Sit if you like it. Oh, you're so good. How about a shake a paw? Come on, shake my paw, Shay. Oh, you're so, such a good job, Daddy. Oh, thank you. Oh, yes, we did a good job. Oh, you're so cute. Danica. Long nose, Danica. Look at that profile. I don't feel so bad anymore. You're cute. Yes, for a dog, you look beautiful. Right? All right. Let's get this place cleaned up. And back to the Olympics is on. Yay! The Olympics is on.